Hello there, fellow space biologians, and welcome back to some Warhammer 40k lore. In today's entry on dangerous or bizarre Xenos beasts, we shall learn about not one, but two alien creatures. Creatures that you definitely never ever want to meet in real life. They are the Mothluk and the Sinophian Boarworm. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? From the Journals of Inquisitor Felroth Gelt, 718, M41, to quote, Interrogator Lyra Morrill's first experience with the unique ecology of the Imperium's high worlds took place only six months after she entered my service. I had dispatched her to investigate a manufactorum in Sibelus's underhive. The local Arbites suspected cult activity, but a week into their investigation, all contact with the Manufactorum and their informants was lost. As I was busy in Sibelus with another matter, I volunteered Lyra to accompany the response team. The following is her report. From Interrogator Lyra Morrill, Investigation 26-Aleph-12, Cult Designate Pilgrims of Hate, Smeltery 21B, Hive Sibelus, Scintilla. The arbitrators and I arrived at Smeltery 21B to find the entire complex sealed. I was able to cajole the machine spirit of the Manufactorum's cogitator to open the outer blast doors. Inside, we found Smeltery 21B entirely deserted, with no sign of the 30 workers that should have been on duty. The squad split up and began a thorough search of the complex. I had just found a number of holes in the rock rid walls of the main smelting room that looked like someone went berserk with a rock borer, when I heard shouts over the microbead. Two arbitrators were checking out a sub storeroom when they had been ambushed, and one of them was grabbed and pulled, screaming, back among a pile of crates. I immediately led a fire team into the crate maze to recover the arbitrator. In a hidden corner of the storeroom, we discovered the body of our comrade obviously dead. The chest carapace had been bored open in much the same manner as the rock rid walls of the smelting room. At that moment, we were attacked. Worm-like monstrosities lunged out of the darkness and killed two arbitrator almost immediately. We responded in good order with a volley of fire, but the shots from the arbitrator's riot guns skipped off the shell-like carapaces of the creatures without any effect, and my last pistol proved just as useless. I ordered the squad to fall back, but it appeared the creatures had turned the Manufactorum into their lair. Out of the twelve men and women who entered Smeltery 21B, only myself and four others made it out. It would have been five, but we had to abandon one man after a seemingly minor bite to the arm dropped him, paralyzed and helpless, to the Manufactorum floor. End report. The Mothlux are a nasty species of hive vermin, whose evolution is likely due to the extremely toxic conditions found in the lowest reaches of an imperial hive. Vicious pack hunters, they will eat anything that they can chew through. Mothlux prefer dark, damp, and enclosed environments, making the lowest reaches of a hive perfect for them. They often have been found swimming in the toxic channels and waterways of the hive cities across the Calyxis sector. They frequently hunt in small groups, but their burrows have been known to house up to a dozen of them or more. The Mothlux body, which can be up to one and a half meters in length, or five feet, is segmented and has multiple small articulated legs, allowing it to scale many sloping surfaces and worm its way into tight spaces. If they cannot find a way around an obstruction, they are quite capable of burrowing through a rock and even some metal alloy with their shovel-like mandibles and their maws full of sharp grinding teeth. The Mothlux prefer to hunt via ambush. Packs of the creatures will locate a suitable hiding place, or burrow to create their own, and wait until prey comes within reach. They prefer to attack their targets with mandibles located on the either side of their mouths. Besides the crushing damage, the mandibles can also inject a powerful paralytic poison. The Mothlux will then drag the helpless prey back to their burrow to feast undisturbed. The second of today's creepy crawlies is called the Sinophian Boarworm. To quote, Inquisitor Gelt, 
please accept my initial examination for what it actually is. Only the most basic of dissections. I will prepare a far more exhaustive data slate at a later date. First, allow me to state that under no condition should a boar worm be handled without first donning some kind of protective glove, or better yet, using a metal instrument to manipulate a living worm. The creatures have gullets ringed with many chewing teeth, and will readily attempt to burrow into any flesh they come into contact with. Once inside the body, a boar worm will burrow slowly, consuming flesh, blood, and viscera freely. As they eat their way in, the segmented body of the worm will break apart over time, with each individual segment quickly maturing into a fully grown and active worm. Thus, a boar worm uses a host as both a larder and a nursery, devouring it alive from the inside out. It is my theory that this practice is to enable the distribution of the worm. An infected host often staggers some distance before finally succumbing to the worm and its progeny, to then fall prey to scavengers, many of which will consume segments of the boar worm in the process, and thus the cycle repeats itself. Most disturbingly, the boar worm has a distinct resemblance to other xenoforms created by the slot a particularly vile and disgusting breed of alien which plagues our sector. Your loyal servant, Magos Biologis Kaltos Malinte. From the journals of Inquisitor Felrav Gelt, 124-754-M41, to quote, One may encounter great threats in the smallest of creatures. Recently, my retinue and I have come across a truly foul Xenos, barely longer than my hand when fully grown. I speak, of course, of the Sinophian boar worm, a simple carrion eater, pressed into a far different service. Normally pale, almost translucent, a feeding boar worm becomes bright red with devoured flesh and blood. This has led them to be considered sacred by the cultists of the blood god and encourage their trade. The cultists of corn use them to torture captives and I have personally witnessed great vats of worms writhing obscenely in a soup of blood and offal. I shall not forget my first encounter with the victims of the boar worm. We were on Malfi, where nigh treacherous descent seems to be a common pastime. Cults thrive there, especially those dedicated to the Skull Lord. One such sanguinary cult has found employ with a minor noble house, ridding them of their undesirables and their political rivals. My entourage and I pursued these heretics deep into the depths of Hive Cerro, finally cornering them among their torture chambers and slaughter rooms. As the cultists work themselves up into a battle frenzy, they sent forth their prisoners to buy some time. The wretches had all been given so-called Corn's Kiss, a euphemism for boarworm infection. Moaning and staggering towards us, with small red worms dropping from any open orifice, the hive dwellers were beyond any help but swift elimination. Commanding my cadre to do their duty bound to the Ordo Malleus and the Emperor, we cut them all down. Even now, a clean death was denied the wretches. From open wounds would spill many boar worms, all engorged and red with consumed blood and flesh. Some burrowed back into the cooling bodies of their hosts, while others made their way to where we stood and became crushed under our heels. I considered delivering what few cultists we captured alive into the storage vats of the worms, but realized that for the followers of the blood god, that would be akin to making them one with their god. Instead, we just executed them quickly. End quote. A small, aggressive beast with a voracious and insatiable appetite, the Sinophian boar worm is as dangerous as it is unnerving to look at. Usually a pallid length of bristly segments, boar worms have such semi-transparent flesh as to render their internal organs visible in faint light. The head of the animal is marked by a circle of hooks, designed to dig into exposed flesh, while the gullet is lined with rings of teeth. Able to feed on pretty much any kind of flesh, the boar worm uses those teeth to literally chew its way inside a corpse or living creature. As it feeds, the worm becomes flush with blood, and more than one brave man has felt a rush of horror at seeing the scarlet length of a boar worm, slick in blood and slime, emerge from a body, its hooked anterior questing about for more. 
When in the wild, boar worms will choose long dead corpses, devouring flesh that is too rotten for bigger scavengers. They will attach themselves to anything desperate enough to grub among the remnants, eating the luckless animal from the inside out afterwards. Those few human victims that survived a boar worm attack state that they feel every twist and turn that a boar worm makes inside their body. Only a precious few can deal with that sensation and try to seek help. Many will commit suicide, indirectly serving the worm's desire for a meal. After a time inside a victim, the worm will start to break apart, each segment quickly maturing into a fully mobile worm itself. If caught early, boar worm infection can be cured, with a combination of surgery and chemical treatment. However, once the worm starts to break up, death is almost a certainty. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the adorable moth luke and Sinophian boar worm of 40k for today. I dearly hope you weren't planning to eat anything after watching the video. I can't decide which one is actually more nightmarish, although I think I'll go with the boar worm. I can't think of a much worse fate than being eaten from the inside out. What about you though? Did you know about any of these before today? Which one did you find most terrifying, or why not, interesting? As always, I more than look forward to reading your thoughts on them in the comments below. If you found this informative, leave a like, share and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon to stay more up to date. Thanks a lot for watching, and the Emperor protects.